So now that we're headed into our sixth month of lockdown here in Germany, I thought I'd speak about the struggles and about the cures that I found for it. And I won't lie, it's been pretty hard actually. Um, and I know it's been hard for many and I don't even get to complain because as a creative I still get to keep my job and do what I love doing, which is writing books, um, which is which many creatives don't have the privilege to do, creatives like actors who acted on stage, musical actors, dancers, and so on and so on, singers who performed. There are so many creative people struggling right now because of the pandemic. Uh, I feel like the creative industry is the second largest industry to suffer under these circumstances. But uh, from the perspective of a creative, I also feel that this lockdown... Um, this confinement that we have as creatives, it actually drains our creativity because we feel a lot of anxiety, we feel a lot of restrictions, um, things around us always pushing us to our limits, mentally, mostly mentally, and creativity vanishes under, under these circumstances. And I, I will be honest, I struggle I still struggle a lot and I've struggled a lot during the past month, but I found ways to survive. And this is why I'm titling this video Ways to Survive the Lockdown. I'm not saying that I'm striving in this lockdown. It's still hard and I still fall off the wagon many times and I still have to remind myself of these principles that I set for myself to survive this lockdown. But I found ways that help me survive this lockdown and stay creative during lockdown and stay and keep producing creative work and creative content and I want to share them with you and I hope they are helpful if they are please let me know in the comments below let me know your struggles and your strategies of coping with this situation right now and with lockdown don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video and share it if you enjoyed it let's dive into it First of all, I feel like the struggle, especially for those who like to control things, is that we're out of control and we don't know what's going to happen in the next month. We can't plan ahead at all. We can't plan the next summer vacation. We can't plan the year. We can't plan whether we can go to summits, meet creatives, and so on and so on. We can't plan anything. And this is to struggle with it. So what I, the principle I set for myself is to always focus on the day ahead only on this single day yes i still do my weekly planning and my monthly planning as best as i can but mentally i try to focus on this one single day ahead not on the summer vacation not on the things that i can plan and do but on this day and what i can do today what i have to do today creatively what can i do to move the needle to get me closer to where i want to go for example I started to write my new book and I'm outlining it right now and I focus on that single thing. How to move my story, how to build my characters, what to do with them. I focus on this one thing, single thing and I, when I wake up I think about what, okay, what can I do to make this a good day today? On what can I focus, how can I move the needle and this is my focus, this single day. And when I wake up the next day, maybe the evening before, I focus on the day ahead and that's it. Without trying to think about the future, to plan largely ahead because it only overwhelms me. I tried to plan my next vacation and then I was like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen, will there be a lockdown? Do I have to do some tests when I travel there and so on and so on. And then I just gave it up altogether and was like, okay, breathe and let's just focus on the day that's in front of me. And this has helped me a lot. And number two is focus on others rather than myself. Because if I focus on myself, my creativity, that I'm not creative enough today, that I have don't have any ideas, I start to build anxiety and build and build it up, but then... I try to focus on others, asking myself instead, how can I serve my audience? What can I do for them to make their day easier, to make their lives easier? How can I focus on my kid, my partner? How can I appreciate them more today? How can I show them that I cherish them, my friends, my parents? And even if we can't meet people, for example, during lockdown, and we have these restrictions, 
We can show them that we appreciate them in other ways. For example, just calling them once in a while, calling my grandparents more often than I do usually because I'm so busy with life, um, writing texts to my friends and let them know that I appreciate them and I cherish them and I miss them. Just think about how can I make the day for others? How, what good can I do to ease the situation for others? Because let's be honest, even if you go shopping, for example, and you see somebody at the counter, um, just be friendly, just give them a smile because people are so tense right now and people are really struggling. Many have lost their jobs, many are just anxious, many... Uh, I, everybody's struggling, basically. Many have kids, they have to homeschool. I, my kid's just small, so I have it easy right now, but I have friends who have multiple kids that I have to homeschool for a month now. And this is hard. And just don't focus on how hard it is for yourself, but focus rather on how hard it is for others, for your friends, for the people around you, and try to help them, even with small gestures, with small things. Try to ease their load and help them out and make this day better for them. Number three, build small islands. And what I mean by that is, for example, we just decided with my partner we would buy e-bikes and this was such a grand decision because we can't go on vacation we can't discover any new countries or cities but what we can do is discover the place around us so we just sit down on our e-bikes and drive around look at the neighborhood look how people uh, live what the, what's there to discover maybe get a small discover a new coffee shop and get a coffee to go and just discover the place around you and it was such a grand decision and this is what I mean by building small islands in your day-to-day -day life. Um, even if you can't go on vacation, you can't go out, take your balcony and renovate it and make it special so that you can spend your afternoons and evenings on the balcony instead and you enjoy it because it's beautiful, there are lights, there are plants and so on. Um, get bikes, Discover the things around you, go to, into nature, buy yourself a takeaway coffee that you like um, or, or a piece of cake, you know. Um, just build small islands so that you can recover. Take a bath and please, what I mean also by small islands is um, don't get into the vicious news cycle. This has helped me a lot. I actually, what I decided last week is that I would don't, I, I don't watch any news at all. First, I allowed myself to watch news because I thought like, okay, um, I have to know, I have to be informed, I have to know the new regulations and so on and so on. And But it just tore me down creatively, mentally. And I decided for myself, I will, won't watch any news at all. And I know I will be informed anyway because my my uh, husband is telling me those things, other friends are telling me those things and I will be informed either way, but I'm not in this vicious news cycle. I don't read any news and this has helped me so much. I actually deleted social media as well. I was a little bit active on Instagram, deleted that. I'm not on social media at all and this helps me a lot because I don't hear any of the things going on concerning this pandemic, which is theories, conflicts, uh, all of these things about vaccines and so on and so on. No, I don't want to hear about that. I want to be creative. I want to think about other things. I want to enjoy my life. And this is why I decided to build little islands and cut me off from the vicious new cycle. Number four, have an outlet. You cannot gather all of these feelings, the stress and anxiety inside yourself. Instead, try to have an outlet in whichever form it comes. For example, exercise, go out and run, run for miles if you want to, if you like running, uh, find friends that you can talk to and you can actually get a load off with them. So yeah, you can talk to them about your problems, about your anxieties, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's a friend or your parents, whatever. Talk to people about what you're feeling, find an outlet to go out, just be in nature, just walk for hours, exercise, whatever, whatever is helping you. Maybe meditate or I'm, I'm a Christian and I know that when I pray and I read my Bible, I really, it really gets me going. It gives, gives me joy in life because I know somebody's looking out for me and I don't have to be anxious. Whatever is helping you find an outlet for your anxiety so you don't hold it up inside of you. Number five, don't mourn 
pre-COVID times. And I've been guilty of it myself. I'm, I still am from time to time and I have to stop myself from mourning what has been before COVID. So, you know, I always think about these uh, great days where we just could go out, sit in a restaurant, nobody would have to wear masks or worry about how far or how close we are to each other in distance and so on, uh, where we could just fly wherever we wanted, visit country, countries, go to the cinema and so on. Um, and you feel like this yearning and this nostalgia of pre-COVID times and it tears you down. And I'm not saying that you should just resignate and accept the life the way it is um, but I'm saying that you should stop mourning and stop bathing in this pity bath where everything is so where you're just saying okay I just want to go back I just want things to be normal again we don't know if they're going to be normal we hope for it and it's fine to hope it's good to hope but as long as you hope you have to move on and not mourn the life that was pre-covid instead because you don't have control over this. You don't know if and when it's going to happen. But what you know is that you have this day ahead of you. You have this life that you've been given and you have to make the best of it. So stop, just stop yourself radically. If you catch yourself thinking this, these things, saying these things to people, just stop it. Because you can't go back. There is no turning back. There is just forward and you have to live with what's been given to you, cope with that and move forward instead of looking back and wishing things to go back to the way they were because it just will tear you down. Several days ago, three episodes of the newest Handmaid's Tale season four came out and I was like, okay, I, would, I, I was decided to just sit down and watch one episode and then go to bed and... Of course, I ended up binging all three episodes and watching them and crying my tears out like I always do when I watch The Handmaid's Tale. Um, but it kind of gave me a new perspective this time. When I watched it, I was like, okay, we, we still have it good, you know? We still live in a world where I can keep my children and where I... I'm... I... I'm not confined to another person that tells me what to do. I'm not a slave to people. And yes, there are things that are not perfect. Yes, there are things that I don't like the way that they're happening. But I want, and this is my, like the largest trick of all, I feel, the largest hack of all, to approach every day with an attitude of gratitude. And we all heard that about gratitude and that gratitude helps, but it actually really does to just look at what you have instead of what you don't have and be thankful for that. Look at what you have and make the most of it and be thankful for every little thing you have. Be thankful that you're healthy. Be thankful that you have enough groceries and you don't have to uh, be afraid that your kid or, or you or yourself might starve to death. You know, there, there have been worth, worse times in history and even our grandparents lived through much worse, worse times that we are living through right now. So just be grateful for what you have because you also don't know for how long you'll have it. So you have to enjoy what you have. I'm looking at my kid and I'm like, okay, she's growing up so fast. Even a year ago, she was so small and could barely talk. And now she has her own opinions and talks to me all the time about things. And she's just so grown up and it's never, you know, time's never going back. She will only grow up faster and taller and there will be a time when her life will stop revolving around me and I have to prepare myself for that but if I don't enjoy the time that I have right now with her then it will be wasted and I can never go back and this is the same whatever season of life you're in in even this season of lockdown you have to enjoy it because you will never get the time back Approach it with an attitude of gratitude and just think about maybe if you wake up in the morning, think about three things you can be you can be thankful for today and just keep them in your mind and be thankful. Be thankful that you can create. Even if you're an actor and you you were deprived of your creative outlet, find another another creative outlet. If you were in this season deprived of what you love to do fine because we're creatives and 
mostly all creative endeavors excite us, right? So I'm I'm an author, but I love doing creative stuff, whatever it is. Um, maybe not I'm not good with crafts, but <laughs> everything else is, you know, I just love it. And I feel like, yes, if you were deprived of a stage, build yourself for your own stage from the comfort of your home and do something else. Find another creative outlet and be thankful for that and learn from that because we are creatives and the place for us to create is inside our minds, right? Our minds are the place where we can cocoon ourselves in and create and this is something nobody can take from us. Leo Tolstoy actually wrote on the battlefield, you know, so what are we complaining about? We can create everywhere and at any time and this is kind of, this is our strength. This is what builds our joy and when we stop complaining about what's happening around us and thinking about the bad things and instead start thinking about the good things and find new creative ways for a creative outlet, for gratitude, for serving our audience in another way, we will find that we can get through this lockdown and onto the other side. And I hope you found it helpful. Please don't forget to support the people around you, other creatives, your audience, care for them, find a creative way to help them through this. And we can get through this together and we can stay creative and stay joyful and stay motivated and create new and amazing things.